Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never, but what I do know, this is 4F Beauty and if I'm doing my job right, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Because this is the latest instalment in my zodiac series. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today, we are talking about Aries, and we are discussing the ruling planet associated with Aries. So, if you'd like to know exactly which planet we are talking about, what the traits are of said pal palette, planet, it's hot, folks. It, um, my brain is melting quicker than my makeup. The traits associated with said planet. Which new indie palette? There we go. I'm reviewing today. And most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Then, my friends. You have the best seat in the house. As I've said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere on other less imaginative channels. But they don't have Sammy, the sloth straw to accompany them. Do they, Sammy? No. I'm talking to a plastic sloth. <laughs> Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, we would have discussed, in, well, I might have mentioned the fan in the intro, it's blisteringly hot, the only way I'm going to keep makeup on, even with using my antiperspirant. Uh, primer. I need the fan on. I'm really sorry if it's distracting for you. Um, I've kind of got it pointed behind me so hopefully it shouldn't affect the sound too much and I'll do what I can in editing to make sure I'm as audible as possible. Uh, but this is the continuation of my Zodiac series. It's been a while since I did the last one. But I've had so many collabs and stuff to do, which I love doing, that I've just not had a week to put by. Because um, I like to try and do them all in one week rather than split them across two or three. So we're on to Aries. And this is the planet. And I'm looking at it on my phone right now. It is, of course, Mars, the red planet. I'll put the picture up here that I'm looking at. Now, obviously, it's not exactly red. It's kind of a reddy brown. And I have a new indie company that I bought a palette from. This is from Brown Melanin Makeup. And this is the Melanin Fantasy Eyeshadow Palette. Uh, they are based in London. They are cruelty free. Uh, and this has got a 12 month life span once you open it. Not that I ever follow that basically, I never do. But to give you a look on the inside, look at that, isn't that lovely? And I just think these sort of, these sort of three colours here would be absolutely perfect to reproduce that with. Maybe even with a little bit of this thrown in as well. Maybe one of these two to do a bit of shimmer on the lid. 
we'll see what happens when we get there. So this is kind of a dual thing, it's part of the Zodiac but it's also trying out a new palette which is awesome. Um, this is still a teaching channel even though I'm doing my Zodiac so as always I will go through it as I would normally do with my teaching I zoom right in tight to my eyes, I go at the speed that beginners and people with chronic pain like myself can keep up with um, if you need to speed me up, uh, there's a speed widget it's either up there somewhere or down there somewhere depending on whether you're on your phone or your laptop or whatever uh, basically speed me up if I'm not going fast enough for me uh, I have all of my notes in here about the planet but as always in case you're watching it because you're more interested in the review of this or the actual makeup application then I will be leaving all talk of the Zodiac bit to the outro section at the end. Right, as part of my teaching I try and uh, make as simple as possible the difference between deep set and hooded lids. Uh, the way that eye makeup wears on both those eye types throughout the day is very similar but the workarounds for each eye type are very different and I see so many people that have got hooded lids or so many people who think they have hooded lids when in actuality they have deep set eyes so I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment again very up close and personal it will literally just be my eyes on the screen I will talk you through how to tell the difference and what the workarounds are for each eye type and then at the end of the clip I'll be back uh, to apply some coloured pigments to my eyelids. Each clip. Now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. 
it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, and I am back. Right. Going in with a fluffy blending brush, it is clean, it's just, it's stained. And I'm going to go into this Melanin Fantasy Eyeshadow Palette from Brown Melanin Makeup. And I'm going to start off by going into, I think, Ohima, which is this lovely mid brown on the end here. Now we're going to start off with oh not, not, not a lot of kick up in the pan, that's nice as you can see. But you are getting pigment onto your brush which is good. Now always hold your brush right at the end so you put as little pressure on your eyes as possible. And we're going to do the Viennese Waltz of blending. Bear with me. This means natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. And the reason I do this is rather than just the windscreen wiper, which most you'll see most beauty gurus use. Not I'm a beauty guru. Um, Right, hubby's peering in the window trying to work out if I'm filming or not. Um, I'm 46, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. More so this side, because this is the eye that I'm blind in and I have these super deep creases just here where it was pulled around when I was five years old. So, by doing the circular movement or the Viennese Waltz blend, we are very gently moving the skin on our eyelids around in both directions so we don't get that telltale white pinstriping or tiger striping that you can get when you use the barcoding and your skin folds over on itself. So, always start at the outside edge because if you do deposit too much pigment it's much easier to blend it out, out here when your nose isn't in the way. So, I haven't even swatched this yet, so I genuinely don't know what to expect from this palette, but so far this is feeling very nice. Just do my reverse turns and then back into my natural turns and a bit of a fleckle when I get there. But you can see that that blends out actually really nicely. Just going to build that colour up. It's 
much easier to build colour up than it is to put too much on to start with and then have a nightmare blending it out. Um, I've had some questions about, obviously I always use my Crow and Pebble eye primer but then if I'm cutting my crease because I need a wet um, or a moist substance to cut the crease the way that I do it um, I don't use the Crow and Pebble, I use like a um, usually a concealer but I've had some questions, have I tried the Gerard Cosmetics um, eye primer yet, which I haven't done but I do have a code with them, so I have made an order most recently um, and I've actually ordered the I think it's the clean canvas they call it but I've ordered the eye primer to try for you so we can see how that behaves and I can give you a decent response. Okay, that's blended out really, really nicely. So now I'm going to do the same thing this side. Now the reason that I do both eyes kind of at the same time, rather than doing all of one eye, stopping and then going back and doing it on the other eye, is because your eyes are not symmetrical. Unless you Photoshop them like a certain Jimmy Chuck does. So sometimes you actually have to do a slightly different shape on one eye so that when you are looking at them side by side they actually match. So that's why you'll see me sit back, relax my brows and just check to make sure I've got the same kind of shape both sides. It's also useful because you can then make sure you've got the same depth of colour both sides before you start adding more pigments and more blending. Now, if you're not sure what size blending brush to choose, whatever the uh, width of the head of the brush, that's pretty much how far it will blend the shadow out to. So if you've got slightly less eye real estate than I have because I have got deep set eyes then just use a slightly smaller brush it'll blend it out to a slightly smaller area just need to deepen up just this outer edge here a little bit I struggle sometimes here and here on both eyes uh, because I get like a very very dry patch there, almost like an eczema but without the, the texture, but just does it goes very very dry and then doesn't like to accept pigment Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth um, I had been using colour switches but they're too hard on the bristles of your brush especially when you are using an actual tear brush, which I think this one is. It feels like goat's hair, doesn't feel soft enough to be synthetic. Might be though, who knows. Right, I'm now going to dip into Strong, which is the orange. And I'm going to use that. Now, if you're going to blend two colours together, like we're about to do here, start off with your brush half on the colour that's already there and half on the patch of skin that hasn't got any pigment on yet. Because by doing that, and going along the edge, to blend, you get a far smoother gradient between the two colours because unless you're doing a very editorial look where you want harsh lines between the shades you really are better off doing it like this because then you'll get a much smoother 
gradient blend. Can you see, you can't really tell where the brown finishes and the orange starts, and that's what I want for this look. I'm just going to build that up a little bit on the outer corner there. And you can see that gives a really lovely, soft edging to the look. Now I, I like to leave a bit of a gap here unless I'm doing a very editorial look. Um, just to put my brow, under brow, brightener or highlight in. You don't have to. Um, you can take the colour right up to the brow if you're really strapped for, um, you know, area. Because you can still pop the, the highlight over the top of whatever colours you've got on your eye. So I'm doing exactly the same here. Blending. along the edge just to soften hmm, I like that I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush now slightly smaller blending brush like this and I'm going to go into Goddess which is the, there's two deep browns, there's this one which is a neutral and there's this one which is a cool brown. Now because I've gone in with these two warm colours I'm going to go in with the neutral brown rather than the cool one just because I think that will give a better blend and a better overall finish to the look. This has got a nice balance, it's got um, three shimmers, seven mattes, which is really nice. Uh, so this one I'm going to go along where my natural crease is. If you've moved yours, this is the point that you follow your new crease. Because this is the deepener that we put in to make this part of the eye recede back. Anything dark goes backwards, anything light comes forward. So if you've had to create a new crease line by putting the deeper colour along where your new crease line is, will give the illusion especially from sort of a bit of a distance when you're talking to people but give the illusion that that part of your eye is receding further back um, and it just just tricks the eye into just giving it a more overall polished look again just lightly blending there don't forget, if you think, oh, I've, I've buffed away too much of the previous one, you can always go back in and add some of the mid shade back in again. It's really not a problem. You can see what I mean about it. it doesn't want to take pigment just there at the moment. So what I do, and when my eye does that, um, I'm going to assume that it is my eye that's the issue, not the pigment at this point until I know different. Um, so I'll, I'll do all the blending around the edges that I want, get it to where I want it and then I'll pick up some pigment on the brush and very gently tap to blend it on. And then this way I'm deepening the colour but I'm not swirling it, I'm just tapping it into place. And that can be a really useful tip for you if you do find you've got a particularly obstructive bit of lid. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this 
just on the very outer edge of my mobile lid there. This is a very, very warm look. I, I, I don't often do warm looks on myself, but when I do, I always get a lot of compliments on them. Um, I just, because I've got a cooler undertone to my skin, I just, I gravitate more towards cooler colours, I think. But that being said, this is a really lovely palette. Um, and this is, obviously I've only used three of the matte shades so far. So I will want to continue using particularly the, um, the burgundy shade because obviously reds are very difficult to create. Browns and sort of oranges and stuff are, are one of the easier colours to create. So again I'm just... Blending this. Now, like I said, with this eye, I do have some really deep creasing just here where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the Ophthalmic Hospital. And I do actually have to stretch my lid out. Um, especially when I'm doing shimmers, but I do actually have to stretch the lid out just to make sure that I've not got any loose pigment there because what can sometimes happen is um, it's a good indication of the barcoding I was talking about there. What can sometimes happen is that the pigment will pack quite loosely into the deep crease and then through the day it'll start flaking down into my eye which is very very painful and of course makes my eye water which it waters enough as it is regular viewers will know that I um, I very rarely if ever am able to put anything in my water line uh, because my eyes have always been very very watery anyway add to that one of the side effects for my fibro is watery eyes and it's peak hay fever season and hubby is currently mowing the lawn. So yeah. Okay. I'm really, really liking how this look is building up. I just want to soften the edges a little bit. So I'm going to get... This is one of the wet and wild brushes. Um, one of their blending brushes. I'm just going to run that without any pigment on it. Just buff that along. Just to soften the edge a little bit. And you can see it is actually it is actually doing something, even though it may not look like it. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? Even though I'm in the UK, we had absolute Egypt setting off fireworks till God knows what time last night, being the 4th of July. It's just... We don't celebrate the 4th of July, why are we setting off fireworks? terrifies all the animals. I just hate it, I really do. It always be absolutely crackers. Right, I've got my uh, cucumber fixing spray here that I'm going to use to wet the brush once I've applied the pigment because we never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. And I think there's three shimmers in here. This February Boss Babe and Magic February Boss Babe Magic and I think 
given that the planet is a russety ready brown I'm going to go in with the boss babe just wipe my fingers on me and I might try first seeing what it goes on like on a dry brush before actually wetting it because they feel very creamy when I just dipped my fingers in like that and they are very 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 soft look how that's packed on that's almost like a super shock shadow so let's see how this applies dry normally I would wet um, shimmers partly so they stick to the brush better but also to get them as blinding as possible but I don't think I'm going to need to wet this shimmer because this is looking pretty bloody fantastic this is just a I think it's a flat lip brush to be honest rather than an eye brush I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to blend the shimmer into the matte shade at the end there. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other eye, but I'll show you how, if you've already got super deep creasing like I've got, um, and you have to stretch your eye out like I do, I'm going to show you the way to do it so that you cause as little additional damage as possible okay now the creasing is about the width of my finger now so I'll allow about the same width again and then put my finger on my lid and I'm gently going to stretch it out just far enough to straighten the creasing I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll I'm just flattening the crease just so that I can get a good blend then when I let go I'm doing it very gently and then the rest of the lid doing it exactly the same as I did on the other eye because I don't want to cause any additional damage to the eye but as I said I can't just um, I can't just apply it the way I did with this one because otherwise it, it does just, it gathers in the crease and cascades down my face into my eye, it gets very, very painful. Right, I am absolutely loving the fact that that shimmer did not need to be wet to go on, it's, it's literally, it feels like a cream to powder. Um, I am really super impressed with this so far. Right my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on and I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Now for me, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can talk to you again, but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you uh, now, really. Hey. Hmm, just give myself a little quick spritz because I was feeling blooming hot. And also, I wanted to try this out. I finally, I bought two of the little mini MAC Fix Pluses that they did for summer. So I've got the Play, which is kind of citrusy, lemon and limey. And then I've got Vitality, which is the orangey one. So I've just given myself a spritz with that because if ever you've sort of powdered and everything and you're like, oof, I'm looking really dusty, spray yourself with either your setting spray or like Max Fix Plus isn't actually a setting spray, it's a moisturising spray. Um, but it does the same thing. 
it, it sort of helps to mesh and meld all the powders in together. Um, I did my soap brows again and used my brow brush to pick up. I actually went into the darkest shade, the sweet brown, this one, to do my brows with. And I'm just going to go underneath the eye with this flat top brush into Ohima, which is that first brown that I used. And just run that along under the lower lash line. As I was saying earlier, I can't really put anything on my waterline, so I always love kind of blowing out the lower lash line a little bit. If it was not such a hot day, I would do a wing. But I don't get the feeling my wing would last very long. Although I do have a chocolate brown eyeliner and I'm super tempted. When I come back in the outro, take bets now on whether I'm going to have a wing in the outro. And then let me know in the comments section whether you were right or not. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love this. Flat topped but chunky. Great for getting up under your lashes and really blowing out the lower lash line. So I'm going to dip into Strong, which is this orange. And I'm going to use that to buff out the lower lash line. Hubby's just coming in from the, bar, from the garden. Hello darling. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Good, good. Oh. So, just buffing this out along the lower lash line. Just to soften it and sort of pull the colour and pull the whole look together. And I'm then going to go in with this teeny tiny lip brush that I've had for over 10 years. I think I bought it from eBay but I couldn't honestly tell you. It's that old. And I'm going to dip into the shade February in here. <coughs> and use this for the inner corner. Wow, look at that. Bring it along under the tear duct and blend it in under the eye there. This is a... Ooh, I might use this as the highlight today actually. Because it's lush and these are big pans. These are like the big Juvia's Place size, size pans or Sugar Pill size pans. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Going to pop that along under the tail of the brow because apparently, along with everything else, ladies and gents, our brows sag as we get older as well. Ain't that just marvellous? So, by adding a bit of light underneath the brow, it gives the illusion of a lifted, more youthful look, apparently. <coughs> Right, my loves, I'm going to pause you one last time, uh, put some highlight on, some mascara, some lippy, and I will be back with the finished look and with more information about Planet Mars, which of course is what this look is based upon. Don't forget to comment right now whether you think I will have a wing when we come back and let me know if you got it right or not. But my lovelies, I will see you instantly. Hope you voted. I am back my lovelies and no wing. So if you voted no wing, give yourself a gold star. Uh, the mascara that I used was this L'Oreal Paris very different unlimited mascara the waterproof one it's the one where the the handle does that to be 
be honest, I tend to leave it with the um, the cuff thing on so that it doesn't do that because it just annoys the heck out of me. No, I can't get it down. There we go. I normally leave it so it doesn't. I didn't like that the first time I used it. It was way too wet. However, I used it a couple of times, left it for a month or so so it's dried up a little bit and now I don't mind using it, it's quite good. Yes, I have got the hat on because it's too damn hot to take my hair down from a ponytail and I want it to look a little bit raw today. Plus, hubby has his Stetson on so uh, when he's out doing the garden. Uh, the Lippy is my Fenty Beauty Fenty Glow, the gloss, the original shade that came out. I love this. It's it's fantastic for the summer. It's not too sticky, not too... You don't feel like your lips are constantly stuck together. And your hair doesn't tend to stick to it, which is really useful. Right, so, what do I think of this palette? Obviously so far I've used, I'm not really going to count using this one on my brows, but I've used three of the mattes and two of the shimmers. I did use the shimmer February as my highlight, so that is an option for you if you are light to medium. If you are medium to deep, you can probably get away with Boss Babe or Magic if you wanted a, a coloured highlight. But, so far, I am really, really liking the quality of this. There's not a massive amount of kick up in the pan, but you still easily get pigment onto the brush. They transfer well onto the eyes. Little to no fallout. Um, blended really nicely together. Obviously, I don't know what the stain power is like. I'll have to see how it behaves for the uh, rest of the day um, and obviously I want to use a few more of the shades in there before I give a definitive answer but right now I'm really liking that and unless you know the remaining shades are a complete which I very much doubt I get the feeling that will become another one of my favourite indie brands I'm definitely going down the indie brand route. Um, they tend to be less problematic, although one of the larger indie brands, hmm, <laughs> very problematic. But let's not talk about that right now. And let's talk about Aries and its a controlling planet. Now, Aries are people who are born between March the 21st and April the 19th. The planet Mars is a ready orange reddish brown as we've established already. If I think on I'll put the picture back up here again so you can see her. And the traits this planet gives are drive and aggression and competitiveness because Mars obviously was Roman god of war. Yeah, Roman God of War. So that's where your assertiveness, that's where your competitiveness, that's where your aggression comes from. Um, Mars is actually a counterbalance to Venus and is actually associated with masculinity. <laughs> See, I should have kept reading what I'd written. Ruled by the war god Mars, it is also associated with the Germanic god Tyr. T Y R. The symbol for man and for Mars are the same. Its aggressive energy compared to the fatherly energy of the sun. It also covers weapons and tools, impulsiveness loyalty, sports, conflict, and lust. Ooh. So, 
that's what effect Mars has on all my wonderful Aries babies that are part of the 4F family. I hope you found this interesting. Um, I hope you enjoyed the eye look. Obviously there are where this mascara was is still a little sticky. The outside edges of my lashes stick together. Very frustrating. Um, obviously there are three other films to come in the Aries section. I still have to cover the colours associated with you. I have to cover the flowers associated with you and the gemstone or crystal associated with you. So, did you know that Mars was your ruling planet? Did you know all those things about Mars? Or did you just think it was occasionally visible in the night sky as a sort of orangey ready dot? And is the name of a very sickly sweet chocolate bar, which gives me toothache. Seriously though, I really hope that you've enjoyed this, whether it was for the makeup, whether it was for the information about uh, Aries ruling planet, or whether it was just listening to me blether on, like I do, crazily. Worse when it's hot. Mm hmm. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check that you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but they are leaving my films in your suggested uh, to watch films. Um, so it's not obvious that you've actually been unsubscribed. Literally every time I put a film up I'm losing between one and five subscribers. Uh, usually people notice and they come back within a few days but I'm still down overall from where I should be this year. Um, so yeah, please double check that if you could, that would be amazing. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of this look. Do you like it? Would you wear it? Have you tried the particular brand, the, uh, what was it, BMM, Brown Melanin Makeup? Have you tried their makeup yet? What do you think of it? Are you now tempted to try it because you've seen me use it? I know a lot of you do say, oh, I've not heard of that brand before. That looks really nice. I'm going to go and buy that. <laughs> I am a terrible influence on your bank balance, but... Do you know what? I am not going to apologise for that because I only ever suggest good products. So, nothing to apologise for, is there really? Right, I am blethering again. Uh, a nice like would be helpful. A little share, if you could manage it, would again be super helpful. Um, just to, to help with the algorithm and try and get this pushed out so more people can enjoy the madness of listening to me with or without Stetson, with or without Wings. Um, yeah. If you're new to this channel, hi, hello, welcome. I'm not always this mad, sometimes I'm worse, usually I'm better. The heat's getting to me, that's all I can say, that's what I'm going to blame it on. Mad and age and general nuttiness really that runs in the family. But having made it this far through the film, I'm guessing you liked something about it. In which case, it would be wonderful to welcome you to the 4F family. It is super easy to join. You click that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and say yes, and all notifications, and keep saying that every time YouTube asks you until they stop asking you the same damn question, just phrased in a different way. And then hopefully they'll tell you, oh, I don't know, one in four of my films that goes up. <sighs> Hubby is subscribed and even he doesn't get all the notifications for my films. What does that tell you? Hmm? Hmm? Crazy. Uh, but talking of other films, there are an awful lot of others you can watch. Obviously, this is probably going to be the first of the Aries films that I put up, but 
we have Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces which have their four films up you can go back to that playlist and watch those or you know I've, I've got product reviews I've got collabs I've got challenges I've got tags I've, I even read you my favorite poem so basically if you're looking for some me time uh, grab a drink grab a snack pick a playlist put your feet up and indulge right my lovelies as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time bye for now